I want to ask you about Officer X, and again, yeah, deep, <laughs> deep breath here, um, and <sighs> tell us as much as you can, or feel free to, yeah. Karina. Officers, Officer X was this, ah, oh, this real flamboyant character, mm -hmm. cock at the walk, that's, oh, I'm, I'm untouchable, look at me, I'm just, I'm, I, I can do and say whatever I want. So he started doing and saying whatever he wanted. This was before I formed up for overseas, before we left Ireland. The first introduction to, to me, uh, he, he introduced himself and, and he was going to be my boss. And he said, wow, wow, Malloy, it's always Malloy. Um, yes. Wow, Malloy, look at the ass on you. Look at the figure you have. You, <laughs> you remind me of my mistress. We are going to have fun. Oh, Malloy, I'm going to have so much fun with you and I'm going to have you before the six months is out. Oof. So, um, and I, I was only a corporal then, so I approached my sergeant and said, did you hear that? And the sergeant said, um, yeah, 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 look, it's only a bit of banter. Oh. He'll calm down when he gets overseas because he'll have real work to do and he'll leave you alone. You'll be okay, you'll be okay. It's only a bit of banter. It got dark. It got very dark and it, it continued and continued the inappropriate touching, the grabbing from behind, said, oh, Malloy, you looked really great in your bikini. Did you wear that for me? And because um, we did have the occasional opportunity mm. to, to do a bit of sunbathing and he just kept at it and at it and at it. But <laughs> because there's a strange system in the army about the complaints that you must go through the chain of command and he was my chain of <laughs> command. So I had to put in writing a request to have an interview with him to tell him to please stop. Oh, that's absurd. Yeah. And he turned it on me. He said, oh, oh, well, all right, then, Malloy, I'll stop giving you compliments if that's what you want. And I left that interview saying, well, you know, am I being too sensitive? You know, and but anyway, he continued and I and I reported it and reported it and reported it. And uh, nothing, and nothing happened. Until that horrible night. Yeah, about, about a week before we were due to fly home. Um, after 12 o'clock, I was tucked away in my bed and this unmerciful banging on the door. Now, when you're overseas and someone bangs on your door, you, you, you get up and you open the door because there could be a fire, there could be mm. uh, anything could, yeah. ha could happen. You don't, you don't question don't, it. You don't question yeah. it, you, you get up. Mm. So unfortunately for, uh, for that mission was, it was quite hot. I wasn't very. I wasn't wearing very much in okay. bed because there was no air conditioning in the rooms. Yes. So I quickly put on a very uh, loose cotton dressing gown, opened the door, and there he was. Malloy, I'm f fucking having you now, and that's it. Officer X. Officer X, and he launched at me and pushed me in. And we both landed on my bed, and he, but my saving grace was that he was very, very drunk. Would have been a different story if he wasn't so drunk because he was a big man. So, but I hesitated for that moment when he was lying on top of me and I said, oh my God, am, am I going to be this woman that, that freezes in this situation? Yeah. And for a second I did freeze and I said, no, I said, I can't be this woman, I'm not doing it. So I luckily, I pushed him off, I rolled off the bed onto the floor, got up, ran out the door and <laughs> ran to the two men that I worked with, the sergeant and the private, and, and ran into the Irish camp and asked for help. <laughs> and the sergeant, quite, the sergeant uh, er, said to me, so where is he now? I said, I, as far as I know, I left him on my bed. He said, right, you go back. While we're getting dressed, you go back quickly and make sure he's not wandering around the, the, the camp and he's found drunk wandering around the camp. Like, protect him. Extraordinary. Yeah. Extraordinary. Why, this is a question I know you've been asked. Why did you stay in the army for so long, given the countless... <laughs> microaggressions, but also macroaggressions and yeah. what you've just outlined between mm. the swimming pool to this horrible incident. Um, I, I, I stayed because one, I was one, one of the first 38. Yes. And you like the way nuns say, oh, I married God. Nuns marry God. Yeah. I married the army. I didn't get married. I didn't have children. The army was my career, my love. I just adored it. And I stayed because my attitude is, well, if you're not in the room, you can't change the room. Mm. You have to stay and make it better. The, 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 the fairer question, sorry, as I'm talking to you, the fairer question I should, that people, I was asking a question that people probably think, are thinking, but the fairer question is, 
why weren't these guys kicked out? Yeah, As opposed you, to why were you, yes. why did you not, uh, not leave? Yeah, you asked that question to the Chief of Staff at your interview, when you interviewed him. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. I was screaming at the radio at, at you and, and he, he didn't answer that question. Well, you know, this is where I'm putting it to you. You stayed in there because you didn't. You wanted to fix it from within. from within. We spoke to two politicians, female politicians, last week here about getting trolled and abused and, mm. and, and, and being spat at and, and everything. And they said, we're not leaving politics because then they win. Exactly, uh, they win. They yes, win. They win. So, but you, you stayed there. Is the army still a dangerous place today yes. for women? Yes. yes. You, didn't, yes. you didn't hesitate. No. no no, I didn't hesitate because I know from the, the Women of Honour uh, documentary, we were flooded with, with women ringing. And in one case, I, I knew a girl pr privately and she joined the army 12 years after me. She was fully combatant, trained with mixed, mixed platoon, fully, full mm. on, fully combatant and rose to the ranks. And she rang me the, the day after the documentary I said, oh, Karina, it's just getting worse. It, nothing has changed. What do you hope to achieve by talking tonight, <laughs> by people reading your book? What would you love to be able to say by the end of 2023? Well, we got that done. Yes, we got that Which done. Which is what? What done? Accountability. You don't think it's there? No, it's not there. No. And it's time for change. And it's time for change. OK. Well, it took guts for you to, to write that book and I appreciate what you coming on because, as I said to you when I met you before the show, it's for the next generation it's, yes. to try and for, stop, stop for this For your happening. daughters and your Precisely. daughter's daughters. You've got that right. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank and you good luck with everything. I hope me. you have happiness in your Thank life. You. Karina Malloy, Thank you.